Good morning and welcome to module 14 of acoustics of vowel sounds. This is uh, um, this is the uh, fourth or fifth unit of uh, a set of uh, seven on acoustic phonetics. It's a short course on acoustic phonetics and uh, we come to the acoustics of vowel sounds and a little bit of uh, recapitulation here would be in place. Uh, like we started with the introductory uh, session, module 10, and uh, moved on to larynx as the source of uh, voice or source of sound. And uh, then uh, 11 and uh, module 12 um, dealt with the oropharyngeal chamber as uh, an acoustic filter. Now that module plus this module together will complete the picture as to how speech sounds are produced and how vowels uh, which are the resonant sounds and oropharyngeal chamber as a resonance chamber as an acoustic filter has been discussed elsewhere. So the two units combined will uh, give you a clear understanding of the acoustics of vowel sounds or let me say acoustics of vocalic sounds which will include a few more sounds. So as explained in some of the earlier units, uh, vowel sounds are plus vocalic and uh, minus consonantal. Plus vocalic by definition, we have said that before in the earlier units, plus vocalic would mean it has the acoustic field very well organized in the form of formants, which means it is a resonant sound. There are resonances in the production of vowel sounds. So plus vocalic, minus vocalic as one feature and plus consonantal, minus consonantal as the other feature. These two parameters give us four major classes of speech sounds. Now plus consonantal on the other hand is if it's a non-resonant sound and uh, it can be noise in contrast with music. Musical sounds are the resonant sounds. So then plus consonantal is generally defined as the low energy sounds and minus consonantal would then be high energy sounds. So vowel sounds are placed in that box where you can see it is plus vocalic and minus consonantal. It is high energy sound and the acoustic field is also well organized in the form of formants or resonance patterns. So vocalic also implies that it is plus resonant, plus sonorant and also plus syllabic. Sonority, we have said that before, sonority is the audibility of the sound, how the sound is heard, the auditory quality and uh, high sonority meaning, you know, it's, it's uh, good to hear, it's, it's uh, audibility is uh, fairly good and low sonority would be, you know, uh, not so uh, clear or good to hear. So um, then uh, we have these four major classes of speech sounds and we are focusing on vowels in this unit. So we go back to oropharyngeal chamber as an acoustic filter, as a selective filter and we find resonance and filter as the two opposite phenomena. Uh, if there is resonance happening, meaning some frequencies are picked up and amplified depending on the size and nature and shape of the air column. And if certain frequencies are picked up, the others are not amplified, not picked up for resonance, then those are obviously filtered out. So it is an acoustic filter or it is an acoustic resonance chamber. So uh, what we see in this particular slide, the slide before you shows the three air columns because air column this, I mean in the earlier unit we had compared uh, the air columns like uh, a flute and a trumpet. Flute had a straight pipe and trumpet had a very complex pipe turning over and over and changing the size and shape of the air column, you know, through its uh, course. The oral chamber is like a bent pipe, bent air column, as you can see in the picture. From the glottis, from larynx to 
the place where articulation is happening or where the tongue is making, uh, you know, taking a certain position to change the oral configuration. So, uh, from that, from glottis to that point, you find this is one chamber and the uh, resonance frequencies of this chamber or the frequencies which find resonance because of this kind of an air column that is F1, the first formant. The second formant happens after that. It is an area, it's a, it's a, it's the column, air column, uh, just above the tongue, which is modulated and modified by the movements of the tongue. So that is number two, and that is, that is where the second formant is produced. Then the third formant, if at all it is produced, then it happens between the teeth and, and the lips, the frontmost uh, air column. Formants are not single frequencies because as you can see, these air columns are large and, you know, not strictly, you know, uniform throughout and uh, therefore these are bundles of resonance frequencies. F1, F2, F3 formants are bundles of frequencies which resonate in the air column as the phonated air stream passes through the oropharyngeal chamber. For this, we had earlier mentioned that uh, Gunnar Fant uh, mentioned this uh, formula and uh, worked out this formula for getting the values of the uh, three formants. And the formula is as stated here, F for formant is 2 multiplied by i, i is the number representing the first or the second or the third formant. So i can be 1 for f1, formant 1, can be 2 for the second formant and 3 for the third formant. And then minus 1, this entire factor is multiplied, you multiply this by what you see in the next bracket, velocity of sound divided by length of the air column four times. Average length of the air column you have to calculate what is the average length of the air column in human beings. The male air column average length is about 17 centimeters or 0.17 meters and the velocity of sound at 340 meters per second. So, we calculate F1, F2 and F3 as it comes to 500 hertz, 1500 hertz and 2500 hertz for this kind of a normal natural position of the tongue. Now, the normal rest position of the tongue is the articulatory configuration for a vowel which is heard as a, uh, which is schwa. The formant for schwa or vowel a uh sound. Formants are F1 500, F2 1500, F3 2500. But since the length of the air column, your, your oral chamber may be different from mine and um, each one, each one of us has a different size and length of the air column. Depending on that, it can vary in the male articulation, female articulation and the children's articulations. If you have a smaller air column like uh, women's and children's, then the frequencies are bound to be a little higher. But if it is, if it is vowel a, uh, then what you will mark here is the F1, F2 and F3 will probably be 1 is to 3 is to 5. So that ratio is important. 1 is to 3 is to 5 for vowel a. Uh. Whether you have 500 or 700, 700 f1, then 3 times 2100 zero zero will be the second formant and uh, 5 times uh, 3500 zero zero will be the f3. And that can happen probably in a child's voice where the oral structure is very, very small. So, length of the air column, I just mentioned the X frequencies for male, then it has to be more for females and still higher for uh, uh, children. 
Now the oral configuration of different vowel articulations and corresponding form and frequencies can be seen in this uh, figure taken from La de Figuette. And this is a beautiful depiction, not just diagrammatic. This is actually the sounds articulated, the position of uh, vo vocal organs based on data from sounds in the middle of the word. The words are heed, hid, head and had and uh, then uh, had, hoard, hoard, hood and who would which means four front plus four back vowels along the peripheral, you know, uh, um, peripheral area of uh, cardinal vowel chart. And th these are uh, the X-ray photographs of the author, the Peter Ladefaget, when he articulated these English words, American English uh, pronunciation. And uh, what you see corresponding to each one of the configurations is the two peaks, the spectral representation of the resonant frequencies. The peaks that you see, F1 and F2 being far apart in case of heat, the short, the long vowel, but the frontmost and the highest position vowel, E, as in heat, you find that the first frequency is the lowest, which is around 250 to 300. And the second formant is perhaps the highest, no other second formant goes that high and that is about 2500. So it's the, the ratio should be 1 is to 10, unlike vowel schwa. So like this, the F1, F2 positioning is very, very different and completely dependent on the oral configuration, the nature and size of the air column, the volume of the air column through which the resonance is happening. Now mapping this articulatory and acoustic parameters, in fact this diagram itself shows how we are mapping the two, F1 corresponding to large chambers will large first chamber will be smaller and uh, if it is something like A hard then the two columns are kind of equal in size or uh, you know the first one is smaller chamber as compared to E. So then the that frequency becomes higher. So smaller the chamber, higher the frequency. So uh, then um, we um, look at how we map the articulatory and the acoustic parameters. It's very important to understand. In articulatory terms, we consider vowels as front or back, high or low. High or low can be open and close, open vowels and close vowels or uh, front and back, um, you know, E, A as the front vowels and U, O, O as the back vowels. Now, if we are able to map these two criteria, two articulatory criteria as in that cardinal vowel chart that you can see and define them in acoustic terms then this is a complete description, more precise description of how high or low front or back a vowel is. You can quantify in terms of acoustic parameters. So as you can see in this uh, uh, figure, uh, the, uh, on uh, y axis, you can see from the lowest point 0 to, it is increasing downwards, F1 values. The first formant corresponds to the vowel height. So, more open vowel would mean higher F1 values. Less open vowels or closed vowels would mean lower F1 values. Now, look at the x-axis and 0 at the top and you can see that this is uh, increasing as you move towards your left you find that you can plot second formant over there, but generally the convention is F2 minus F, F1 is plotted against F1. F2 minus F1 actually shows how front or back is the vowel. For a very, very front vowel like E, the F2 will be very high and you deduct uh, F1 value and uh, still it is the frontmost uh, vowel. 
Now, this is uh, um, the uh, a kind of uh, representation, spectrographic represent, not not a spectrographic representation. Only the formant frequencies of these eight vowels put together. Uh, a graphic representation only the frequency scale is used and you can see that the front vowels have f1 f2 is quite far apart as move closer as we move from the high vowel to the lower vowels in case of back vowels you are moving you know you find that the two formants have actually moved closer together and they move gradually a little apart as we move from you know Hard, hard, and hood, and who would as the last vowel. So uh, this was uh, also made possible by a series of experiments uh, by uh, at Huskins Laboratories, and we have mentioned those, and we will have time to talk about it again. Uh, with those, uh, with the help of spectrogram and pattern playback. Pattern playback was the opposite of a spectrogram. You utter a sound and a spectrogram gives you a picture. And you feed that picture back into pattern playback and the pattern playback gives you the sound. So this is the essence of the two kinds of equipments used. In Huskins laboratories, since they had, I mean once they had pattern playback, invented pattern playback, then they could also work with hand painted spectrograms fed into the machine to get the sounds and then you work on what particular vowel that sounds like and what particular consonant that sounds like so these were some of the experiments you know which were also once you produce a sound you have a spectrogram then you reduce everything else or or eliminate everything else just pick up those two formants draw them hand painted um, uh, spectrograms and feed them into pattern playback that will confirm whether these are the two crucial uh, formants for uh, the a particular vowel or a consonant or something so these were uh, also the experiments you know done by hand with the help of hand painted uh, spectrograms coming back to this particular uh, picture where eight peripheral vowels are shown along a frequency scale. The formants are placed along a frequency scale. Now the pattern that you see here is the um, two formants close together concentrated in a small frequency range would mean it is a compact pattern. So the back vowels show more or less plus or minus compact pattern. They can be compared with each other, which one is more compact, so plus compact, which one is less compact, so it will be minus C. But the front vowels, they are defined by another feature, acoustic feature, which is plus minus diffuse. The opposite of compact, diffuse, because they are all placed in the F1 in the lower position, F2 in a much higher position. So it is a huge frequency range that they have covered. So E as the most diffuse vowel, we come to less diffuse and less diffuse as we move from E, A, A, uh, the front vowels. So plus minus, uh, um, plus minus compact or plus minus diffuse, they give us two important acoustic features based on which you can compare the vowels, you can, you know, describe the vowels both in articulatory and acoustic terms. Now, uh, back vowels also have energy concentration or formant distribution in the lower range of frequencies. The front vowels are going into very high, uh, uh, high frequencies. So another acoustic feature is grave and acute. Concentration in the high frequency range, concentration of acoustic energy in the higher frequency range, that leads to plus minus acute criteria, which is important. So plus minus diffuse, plus minus acute will help you define the front vowels much better. And plus minus compact, plus minus grave help you define the back vowels much better. So, uh, 
Apart from this, F1 low versus high can also lead to differences in the timber or quality of vowels. Now, how does that happen? If it is a, a vowel E where the first formant is so low as 250 hertz or something and voice range can be anything up to 300 or 250 hertz male or female voices. So, the fundamental tone of voice and the first couple of harmonics may also get reinforced if it is, if the first formant is too low. So, the timber or quality of those vowels becomes much more acute and much more sharp. Whereas, a vowel like A, ah, which has 800 or 900 hertz as the first formant, there the first uh, few uh, fundamental tone and the first few harmonics have no way of getting the first or getting, you know, finding any kind of uh, resonance uh, in this. So, therefore, the quality of those may be very, very uh, weak. The timber for vowels A ah, or A ah, may not be very clear or sharp as compared to vowel E. Now, analysis by synthesis technique is what I have already mentioned as the experiments conducted at the Huskins labs using pattern play playback where the most important features that you thought were important from a spectrogram. You pick up those features, draw them clearly on a piece of paper and feed that into the pattern playback it should give you the requisite sound unless you are missing something from the real spectrogram. So, these experiments in the 60s after the pattern playback, they contributed a lot to our understanding of both consonants and vowels. We will talk about consonants later, but formants for vowels, as you can see, we have mentioned that they, they, they were understood much better. Now, formants were also taking different shapes. And these shapes are now important because as we discovered from those pattern playback experiments and from sounds in a sequence and uh, vowels not occurring alone, vowels occurring, occurring vowel plus vowel, two different vowels coming together or vowel and a glide and vowel and a consonant together. So, in context, in the context of other sounds, speech sounds in a sequence, you find that this is uh, a general um, guide for uh, what to expect when the sounds are in a sequence. A single vowel with two formants can be steady state formants. The first picture as you see on the screen, but if you have something like A, ah, two formants are close together, E, two formants are very far, then you start from one position, go over to the other if it is a sequence of A ah and E together, A, ah, E, A, ah, E. You will find the two formants moving apart, starting at one point, moving apart. This kind of a steady change, steady change formants are generally for sequences of vowels. Then the third one with a glide. So, here you have vowel E and then a glide and probably ending in a short schwa or a vowel schwa. So, with the year now it is a gradual change formants. It is not a steady change formant, gradual change formants. And the last one when you have a consonant and a vowel. So, consonant plosion is also there and after that the vowel formants begin, you find this is abrupt change formants. So, we will see more of consonants in the next uh, module. But for the time being, we understand formants can look very different on a spectrogram if when they are in, in the context of other speech sounds. Now, uh, pitch of voice and vowel spectra. This is an important point to mention here. I have shown you some other slides where male voice, female voice and children's voice, voices, you know, the three, three kinds of voices have different kinds of spectra. And uh, vowel spectra, the formants reinforcement and uh, the spectral peaks can be seen on a, on a spectrum. But the pitch 
meaning the fundamental tone and overtones or uh, harmonics which constitute glottal tone that is the source and supralaryngeal chamber and resonance what is happening as uh, F1, F2, F3 that is the filter. So, A and B together constitute source filter phenomena for the production of speech sounds. Now, the two seem to be quite independent of each other. A can vary, B may remain the same, B can vary without changing A, which means vowel A or vowel R pronounced by me or you or a third person with different voices, we can still pronounce vowel E, A, A, whatever we want to say. So, the vowel shapes are determined by the oral configuration which happens after the voice has entered the oral chamber. Except for a little bit of change of clarity as I mentioned in this slide, just look at this slide, the timber or quality may vary if the first formant is getting slightly influenced by the pitch and the you know F0 uh, uh, levels. And but generally speaking, the two are quite independent of each other. I mean, your voice and my voice. Voices may be different, but vowels may be the same. And similarly, the uh, vowel, uh, uh, vowels may be different and the voices may be the same or the other way around. You know. So, um, vowel spectra for the same vowel in three different uh, voices as indicated earlier also you can see the two formants one at 500 the other at 1500 the peaks are the same but in between those lines indicate that the pitch of the voice is different. So, vowels with F0 variation that can be part of prosody that can be phonetic that can be phonemic phonetic level it can be vowels with F0 steady level tone steady change it could be rising or uh, falling tones and uh, then uh, steady state but placed at different levels you know you may begin a vowel you may say uh, like uh, in uh, another language you may in, in Thai for instance or Mandarin Chinese you may say pa with a placed at different pitch levels and it will mean three different things. It is level tone but placed 20 hertz higher or 20 hertz lower in the same voice can be high or medium or low level tones. So, these tones can be phonemic in different languages. So, pitch variations as phonemes, this is a linguistic function and <coughs> languages can have pitch levels and contours as phonemic names. This we mentioned earlier in case of voice qualities, but you can have vowels as phonemes and you can have a vowel with three different tones as three distinct phonemes. Punjabi has three tonal contours as phonemes, Thai has five tonal contours and levels, a combination of contours and levels as phonemes, Mandarin Chinese has four and F0 can vary across a vowel articulation for phonetic or phonemic function. F0 can also vary across different sections of the sentence and that is intonation. So, this is the end of our uh, unit on uh, study of uh, vowel sounds and uh, a lot more research is going on uh, on the study of vowel sounds and uh, also an acoustic spaces, vowel spaces, vowel space as cardinal vowel chart indicates a certain kind of space and F1, F2 showing you know the entire vowel space that is also important and uh, lots of studies are uh, still on, on language specific or descriptions or comparisons across languages using these acoustic uh, criteria. But there is more to come for the acoustics of vowel sounds as we move to the next unit which is on consonants. We cannot forget the vowel sounds even if we are talking about consonants. So, happy viewing. Thank you very much.